we are Steve and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show, we answer that and more. Steve and Jack Butella here for Land Academy. <laughs> and I'm Jill DeWitt, and this is the Land Academy Show. This is episode number 2014, and today we are talking about the three reasons why lack of access kills land deals. This is a big deal. Access, access, access. Access, access, access. <laughs> it's all I hear. Access. <laughs> what I'm trying to remember, where does that fall in the... Well, it's definitely one of the first four A's. So if you have been following us for any amount of time, you know we do our due diligence and we have a checklist of... We call them the A's, right? There used to be four, then there were six, now there are eight... And someone lovingly um, today and on one of our member webinars said, I see it going to be 10 soon, <laughs> sure. probably. So, but it's a checklist of things that we go through to make sure we're making good buying decisions. Part of our due diligence process and access has always been on the list. So we're going to talk a lot about that today. This is not new. Mm -mm. Access has uh, been an issue since there's been land. Mm -hmm. Great piece of land can't get to it. Mm hmm great piece of land uh who owns it can't and, build a road yep you so, know maybe i can get to it but i can't put the road in since there have been people wondering mm -hmm. about land this has been an issue so we'll cover it today yep. each week on the show we answer a question from our land academy member uh discord forum and we take a deep dive into land related topics by popular request from our land academy community okay so today we, we have a few um, oh, this is going to be good. Let's take a couple questions, actually. Okay, so to do you... Um, unrelated questions. Unrelated. So we'll do one, answer it, do the other, answer it. But you're just getting aggressive here on your questions. You know why? Because <laughs> I'm getting all kinds of feedback that people love uh, oh. love this part of the show. So we're doubling up. When we talk to each other, not so much. But they love when we uh, answer people's questions. Love it. <laughs> all right, Joe wrote, Hi, everyone. I'm new to Land Academy and working on setting, uh, getting through everything. Uh, and getting all set up my LLC, CRM, website, etc. I have a bit of a unique background and that I have both Jack and Jill experience. Excellent. As I'm a data geek and I manage a large sales force. Interesting. And I've been selling uh, over the phone for 20 years. I'm working through my data set and getting ready to send my first mailer, but I'm looking to partner with some people who are interested in funding deals because a lot of my capital is not currently liquid. If you're interested in partnering on some deals, I'd love to hear from you and to get an understanding of what types of deals you look for in terms of size, type, location, etc. so I can focus my mailer on land that would meet that criteria. Please DM me and let's schedule a time to chat. I look forward to connecting. I have a lot to say. Oh. Do you? <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to think. I'm like, we know what I have to say. I'll, I'll get mine out of the way. Let her rip, Joe, and yeah. just call me if you need money. Next. So that's the the, the outer shell of exactly what I was going to say. So if there's a, if you've been in business before, especially, but not just necessarily that. If you're the type of person who wants everything lined up, and uh, you you spend time researching. I, I'm one of these people, and I want to get all my stuff lined up, ready to go, and then I'm going to send it out. That's not the most effective way here. Uh, if you find a great real estate deal, people will find you somehow. It's like they can read your mind. I'm serious. If you have a knack for locating undervalued stuff, I don't care what it is, especially if it's real estate though, people will come out of the woodwork to, to try to uh, do the deal with you. Right. Or buy it from you or be involved somehow. Yeah. So you're goal here as I've said this many times is to become to develop and become amazing at one single thing locating and securing undervalued real estate that's your one professional job from here on out mm -hmm. if you do that everything else will fall in place every single thing especially uh, and it'll do that it, that will happen very quickly if you're involved at the Land Academy directly 
Well, you know what, Joe, too? Who cares about what you think they want? They want? Look, the right, the right investor, they don't care where it comes from. They just care that it's a good deal. And, if, and the right investor, too, they're going to want to learn about another area. Like, oh, we haven't ventured into fill-in-the-blank state before. Like, we, we talked to um, Dear Sid today. He's like, I'm venturing. We're just now hitting our fifth state. You know, I don't even know how many states we're in. I don't care. So the deals that come to me for deal funding, by the way, I don't flip and care where they are. If I don't know that state very well, I'm going to do my own homework and or or in addition to I'm going to bring in somebody I know that does know that state well and get their opinion on it, too, just before I sign off. It's hard to, you know, if I go to Jill and say, hey, I've been in the uh, um, professional fill in the blank for a lot of years. I just joined Land Academy. And uh, when I get a good deal, what should I do or what kind of deal do you want or any of those questions? And she's going to say, well, you should bring me some undervalued real estate. Do you, know, do, you know what, do you know what really my, you know what, Joe, you know what my bottom line is? Here's my bottom line. Joe, what kind of deal do you want to do? I, I want to do a deal where you and I split the profit and we're each walking away with no less than 20 grand. Yep. That's what I want to do. And I don't want to do any work. I want you to do all the work. So, I don't care where it is, what's going on. I just want to make sure 20 grand each, then it's worth your time and it's worth my time. Other than that, let her have fun. <laughs> it's the same, you know, there, there's a disconnect. Not a disconnect. We're not picking on anybody here because no. everybody's got the same questions. You sure. know, some people are, are bold enough to ask them. Some people just listen. And so I appreciate, uh, really seriously appreciate, you know, Joe asking this question for, on behalf of everyone. You know, it's like going to your lender and saying, hey, you know, I need to. Uh, oh, I want to start a business. I want to buy, I I wanna buy a house. <laughs> yeah. I want to buy a house and, uh, and uh, can you lend me the money? And they're going to say, well, where's the house uh how big is it does it what's the price what is your credit look like are you married they're going to ask all this stuff instead of saying here's the house uh this is the deal that i negotiated can you fund me and that makes a lot more sense for the lender it makes more sense for you and it certainly makes more sense this is not jack and jill uh, specific every single other person that you talk to is going to have sort of the same answer sure please bring me a deal and it's not going to be crazy far off. You can, let me directly answer your question. You need to find a great deal. Yeah. So it's worth a hundred thousand bucks. You're paying 25 or $30,000 for it. Does it pass all the uh, eight days? Oh yeah, sure. Plus this, plus this about it, this about it, this about it, this about it, and this about it. Okay. I think we're going to fund your deal. So it's, it's not, um, there's no real mystery at all. If, uh, if you, if it's, I would ask this question because, I, and I'm spending, taking my time on this. Yes, you are. Please don't. <laughs> Joe keeps pushing the mouse down to the next question. <laughs> Please don't worry yeah. about getting a deal funded. It'll happen. Just trust me on this. Do not worry. But it has to be a good deal. Oh my God, Jack, what's a good deal? A good deal is a property is clearly worth x and you are about to buy it for 20 to 30 percent of x and it doesn't have any real issues in the eight days that's the whole answer from start to finish jen wrote <laughs> good morning everyone sometimes i have a, a co-host sometimes i have an adversary <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to bring up the pillow thing again. <laughs> Just joking. All right. Jen wrote, good morning, everyone. I have a newbie question about best practices because I see a couple of these coming back in my first mailer. Here's the scenario. Vacant land parcel is a separate APN that is adjacent to the seller's residence. Are you straightforward and tell them you're buying it and plan to resell it at a higher price? I mean, certainly they notice this happening since it's next door, wouldn't they? How is this negotiated? How does it work? This is great. Yeah, I don't come out and tell them like, here's the gist. This is a great and it happens all the time and you're doing everything right and don't sweat it. They're only carrying, a, you know, honestly, Jen, honestly, sorry, I'm using, I'm overusing that word. Jack has reminded me. So if you see me catch my or hear me catch myself, that's why. Jen, don't sweat it. They only care that they're about to get 10 grand or 15 grand or 25 grand for that stupid lot next door that they've been staring at, never built upon, never used it, long ago farmed, nobody cares about it. They need the dough. 
They don't need an explanation from you about your whole business model, what's going on, slash however. Should they ask, I'm upfront and honest about it. Like, you know, this is my business. I buy and resell land and, and then I steer them right back. I don't give them a long speech like Jack did on the last question. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> there's some catch. You can hear it in the back of her voice. Like, they're just, just going to fall on me Here somehow. Here it comes. <laughs> just steer them right back. This is my business. I'm the owner. Whatever deal we work out, that's what's going to be on your check. Back back to that. Did you, does my 10 grand work for you? If not, you know, what number makes sense to you and why? Was there, am I missing something? It's too easy. Um, there's not a lot of negotiation that goes on in, in our land transactions. I threw out an offer uh, in the letter. They either like it or don't like it. Give me a number back. Then I'm going to accept it or not accept it. That's really you know the digest. stuff that the stuff that you're concerned about when you take on a new journey or a new venture is uh, and this happens to me all the time. You know the stuff that I was concerned about before I started this. Are I look back on it and I just kind of chuckle to myself. So it's, it's always like that. So I, mm-hmm. Joe and Jen, you know, you guys are again asking the questions that Good everybody's questions. thinking, and I appreciate it. But uh, we buy properties that are adjacent to people's primary residences multiple times a year, and people in our group do also and the way i've answered this in the past is you know uh, i'm i'm involved in a huge group of people that buy land all over the country every week <laughs> what we're going to do with this spe- uh, specific property i'm, I'm not, not sure, sure. I, I don't know we usually decide um much after we've purchased it I'm what i do know out. is that this property fits the cri- fits all of our criteria mm-hmm. and that's unusual and so i'd love to buy it for whatever Jill just said, 10 grand. Right. You know what's interesting too about this? You don't realize it until it happens to you, Jen, is that sometimes you'll even get a seller calling you back that maybe uh, they have 40 acres. Maybe somehow you you tripped on their house and they're so wanting to sell the half they're not using. It's not even split. They almost will ask you, I'd love to sell half of this. I need to keep the house. Can you help me? You're, and I'm, So that's kind of mind boggling when you think about that, but that's the truth and then i usually end it with something like but i can tell you confidently we're not going to put a casino there <laughs> there we that go that should make them happy and laugh <laughs> a little bit that's true today's topic three reasons why lack of access kills land deals again back with the background access is a massive long-term will never go away issue mm-hmm. you know i've i've often looked asked myself you know what if you could f- buy accessless properties and get access somehow uh, mechanically mm-hmm. or from a data perspective or weigh these pre- you know i always try to approach this from a data perspective make it put it into a system and then systematically get access in this case for properties that don't have any mm-hmm. and i have yet to find come even close to that so Access list properties. There's a way out, and Joe's gonna we're gonna explain it, uh, explain it all in a second. But but the Land Academy model is this. Please know this through throughout this. Keep this in the back of your head throughout this whole conversation. We are not in the business of improving property. Period. This is not an HGTV show. One of the reasons this business model works so well for Jill and I and, and everybody that's in Land Academy or not or in, in this business is that we buy a piece of property. We clean up how it looks on the internet, and we resell it. Oh, it's not on the internet. That's the whole thing. We buy it. It's not on the internet. We make it look good. We buy a piece of property. We clean it up. What it looks like on the internet, it's not on there yet. What's the cleanup part? We make it look beautiful on the internet. There we go. On the sell side. I want to make sure we're not cleaning up anything. On the buy side, we never, on the buy side, no one even knows about it except you and the seller. We buy the property. And then we, we get drone shots and beautiful things and put it all in a good le- description and disclose everything that we know about it and resell it hopefully for more. Okay. That's our job. Our job is not to go into the county and spend two and a half years getting access and fighting people and, and yelling and arguing and getting surveyors and all kinds of stuff so that we can get access and make $15,000 when that's all done. So please keep that in mind. We're not here to improve property. We're here to buy it and resell it. Great. 
So I want to I want to give a little backstory. What are we talking about with access? What's it's interesting. There's legal access, meaning can I drive up to it? Whether it means in my, you know, two door low Toyota Camry, uh, or my ATV. You know, there's all different kinds of access too. Or my motorcycle. Can I get there? Um, that's there's physical access, so there's all levels. She of physical. said legal. She means physical. We'll oh, address. did I say legal? There's two types of access. Can I get to this for a second? Oh, what was you, you okay. interchange? Oh, did it, excuse me. All right, I meant physical. Let me let me refresh. So there, so a couple things to think about here with access. There's legal and physical. I'm gonna talk about physical first. That's where I got hung up. Physical is can I get to it? And then there's all definitions of can I get to it, like. For me, get to it in all of my vehicles, right, is very different than his definition of get to it because he has a motorcycle. He can get to anything. <laughs> He'll go down a riverbed. He can get to anything. So, so we have to think about that. So in the in the big the big picture is I think of physical access. I To me, the answer, yes, is physical access when my broker can drive there in some fashion and stand on it. Now, then there's legal access. Now, legal access is on paper, looking at a plat map. You're looking at it in parcel fact, or you're looking at it in data tree, and you see, you see what, but uh, there's a road there. Even though there's not a road there, there's a road on the map, and it says, you know, Farm Road 320, whatever it is. But then you look closer, and you're like, I don't think it's there. But there's legal access. So that's what that is. So today we're talking about what to do when you have one or the other are not both. And I want to say too, one of the things that's really interesting about this is every state's different about what, uh, how, to, how to gain access. So that's part of the discussion we're going to have today. And, but most states, if not all states, correct me if I'm, correct me if you disagree. I don't think there's one state out there that still has a law in the books that anybody can withhold access to your property. I don't think there's any one state that says, too bad, you're buying a helicopter if you want to go there. But do you think there's any that have that? No, I mean, I'm not but sure. But there this are a lot. A, it could be tricky to do it. This is go a ahead. double negative. Most states, what Jill's saying is most states have a rule and probably a statute that says something like this. No landowner can reasonably withhold yeah. access to, to another landowner's property. Yeah. What that means in layman terms is, if you got to cross my property to get to your property, even if it's uh, within reason, I cannot legally with, I can't with reasonably withhold that. What happens in reality is there's a guy standing there with a shotgun saying, you're not crossing my property. <laughs> and that actually, we'll get to that in a second. All right. So what are you going to do? You're going to file a lawsuit and go, no, you're not. Why? Because the thing I said earlier, we're not here to do that. Right. We're not here to improve property. Let's keep it positive here. I'm going to talk positive because that what this is. The reason you're here is because you're like, I don't want to hear all the bad stuff. I want to hear the good stuff and how do I solve it? You got it. So let's get to number one, physical access. Okay. So physical access, let's just say, you know, you look on the map, you're on Google Earth, you're looking at it and everything. You're not seeing it. It is not existent. So, so what do I do? What do you do if the property doesn't have physical access? Yeah, what if you're looking at it? Well, let me tell you. Here's the deal. This is why, you know, the topic is, you know, why this can kill a land deal, but I'm being positive. I look at it on the map. I'm looking at everything. I don't see any physical access. Uh, what would you suggest I do? Well, the first thing I would do is make sure the numbers work on the deal. Okay. Well, okay. So tell me, is the number, is the math different because I don't see the access? Well, uh, you know, physical if, access. If it's, uh, I'm going to stop right there. Okay. And probably not continue even reviewing the deal at all if I can't obviously glaringly seriously see physical access. Okay. By the way, the vast majority of the time, when a property comes back, you don't have to deal with this access issue. So again? What you was do that? not have to deal with this access. True. Yes, yeah, it's a small percentage of properties in the country, but they, but when they happen, it's like, oh my gosh, the seller signed this thing. It's for five thousand dollars, and and if I can, you know, it's probably worth eight, eighty, ninety, a hundred thousand dollars. But I need to confirm that it's got access. So what Jill said, you're looking it up on Google Earth, and it doesn't have access. The vast majority of the time, I will confirm that somehow, either with the county, I'll pull a plat map, or I'll ask the seller, "Have you ever? when's the last time you were there? Yeah. And if I have to, because it's a smoking deal, 
I will probably, uh, in this day and age, ask Jill, and Jill will ask her staff to contact uh, the sellers that are around it and say, you know, what can we do? Can we get to this property now? Is there, has somebody been getting to this property over the last several years that you've lived there? Right. And dig, just build, do some research and dig around and see. I can't see it on Google Earth. I can't see all the, from my desk resources, I cannot see any way to get to this property physically. Then confirm that. Right. You know, what's interesting is we've had this situation. You do need to ask questions. Ask the seller. Ask the county, you know, and, and find out. We have had properties where the tree cover was so thick you can't yeah. see the road. It's very tough. So that's the thing that I think what we're both trying to say is confirm it. Confirm. Confirm it. And then you start looking into the next step. So, um, you know, physical access is obviously important. Uh, And then when Jack said about the math, there have been times in the past that we have picked up great properties very inexpensively kind of because we knew the area so you have to think about this if they can't get to it how can they use it right so if there's some use there maybe it is a great we've had literally rock climbing cliffs and we sold them as a rock climbing cliff we didn't go into it like that you know but the price was so inexpensive we had to buy it and then we turned around and properly conveyed it and guess what it all worked out so you know you have to just think about it and know and know what's possible i guess i think that's the main point today and what jack's saying too is at the end of the day um you're not here to go to court and do all this stuff and file paperwork and do all that i mean people some people do that if you want to make that your niche go for it you could have all the properties i'm passing on i'm not doing that work what i'll do that's for sure i will um yeah i'm not your competition um, what I will do though is find out if a neighbor does and then I find out what the process is you know I could do this in a couple hours in a couple hours I could say I got it I got an email in writing this guy will let us have the access I talked to the county I know it takes about 90 days and three grand that's what I need to know now I can move forward and then I will pass that on to the next person should they want to pursue that a lot of it's dependent on the deal too on the actual piece of property so visualize this you've got a piece of property in the Upper Peninsula Michigan there's nothing around it it's very inexpensive and you know for whatever reason because you have some kind of inside information that it can be used for duck hunting or something that everybody wants and so to get to this duck hunting property that you're going to try to resell you have to cross two or three other people's properties that have never there's nothing there Mm -hmm. so do you think it's likely that you're going to be able to park and cross two other people's property and without any incident and then go uh, duck hunting on your own property i think it's very likely that you can probably get away with that for years Mm -hmm. and years in duck season after duck season so having physical access only really matters when you're reselling to somebody that's going to use it for fill in the blank to build on to uh develop to you know whatever that's good. That's so good. you have to make sure every deal we bu- i've bought tons of accessless property in my in my True. time not a single uh, time have we uh had trouble reselling it so just take a look at it and geez if you're in land academy please ask other people because we've all been dealing with this our entire careers so it's going to take me 15 seconds and jill too to look at a property and say yeah it doesn't have access but if you're getting it cheap enough it's probably going to be okay exactly let's move on to legal what's interesting about legal and we are kind of interchanging the two that was interesting we are kind of interchanging the two because i want both at the end of the day, you want legal and physical, especially if you're new and you're just starting out. I want you to have legal and physical access so you don't even have to think about it. There's no worries about it. It's easy to buy. It's easy to sell. So if you don't have legal access, there's a, let's just say, you know, we're flipping the, the uh, situation. You looked on the map like, oh, I see it. But, oh. It looks like they made a path. Look at this. There's this cool path, and it winds over here, and it winds over there, and then it's, it even tips on the fire road, like whatever, and then drops down. We've had all of this stuff. But I don't think – but there's not a street address, of course, and I'm not sure. There's nothing in here. I don't think this has got legal access. So now what's involved? If it doesn't have legal access uh, – and again, it's not the stuck hunting property that I'm describing. It's just, it's a piece of property that's, well, we're going to call it landlocked. And you have to cross two or three other people's properties uh, 
then you have there, there's a lot of legal things that I can bring up now that I'm not going to bring up to get legal access you need the permission of the people that uh, property that they're crossing that you're crossing and so if you've got a personality like Joe's you get on the phone you help him out he's actually even offer him money Mm -hmm. um, then you can write in easements mm -hmm. uh, on these properties that you need to cross and get legal access and then once you have legal access established and everybody's happy create physical access by blading in roads removing stuff that's in the way and, and putting it in so that's you know that's that's how subdivisions get done. Mm -hmm. So legal access in a lot of ways is a lot more solvable than physical. I have a pro Sometimes tip Sometimes it add. has both. Mm -hmm. And so I don't mean to confuse you here. The, what you need to take away from this is, is if you're brand new, and I don't mean to scare you from getting into this business, what, I, what you need to do is just understand what physical and legal access is, understand that they're both solvable. Yes. Uh, and, and you have to develop um, a threshold of, for risk on whether or not you want to take this stuff on. We don't do it. We, we, it comes in, we look at it. Uh, but you know what's funny? You know why? Hold on. <laughs> why we don't choose to do that? Because I just send out more mail yeah. I just send out 10,000 more letters, wait for uh, the deals to come back, and that's it. I got two things to say, though. Within Land Academy, there's always people that are doing it. So there, yeah. you have all the options. Here's yep. here's our point, too. We're trying to tell you what's possible, and, and you decide what you want to do. Like, you know what? I'm going to do it. Do we know people in Land Academy that have literally have taken a pickup truck and dragged a tree behind it to blade a road? Oh, yes. Yep. Do they? And they carry bolt cutters all day long. You yes. know, no big deal. So it's the funniest thing. I was going to pause and give a little pro tip. If you find yourself in the situation that you are reaching out to the neighbors, right, to get them on board to grant access, just get something in writing so you know what's possible to start. That's what I'm doing. I always reach out with them, giving them an opportunity to buy the property. I send neighbor letters and say, here's a deal. Literally, I've highlighted my parcel, your parcel. Not kidding, because there's only five of them, whatever it is, and or less, you know, you know what I'm saying. Hey, I, I'm looking to sell this property. I happen to be right next to you. Um, are you interested? That's really my first thing. Second thing is if you're, you know, here, and before I put it on the market, market way up, you could have it for X, fill in the blank, right? That's the easiest thing. And then the second part of it is, hey, if it's not something you're interested in doing and expanding your ranch, um, I know, is there any way we could work out some access thing? Let me know that's what I do and it works out great sometimes what's funny is when you do that you often just sell the property and then you just kind of go well problem solved this is one of those things that when you're yeah. starting out you don't need to know this stuff we'll you help just you. need to be in a group yeah we'll and you. as you as a p properties inevitably will come mm -hmm. in the uh, seller will call and say yep Perfect. five grand sounds great what you do is you go on Discord and you present the deal and you start to get the opinions, and who have ours included, and our staff and everybody else that's in the uh, senior member of Land Academy is going to really pipe in and they'll tell you stories mm -hmm. and they'll tell you, give their opinion about whether or not uh, it's solvable or do it, should you even bother or or maybe they, it, they like it and they want to partner with you. Yeah. So this, don't do any research beyond listening to this uh, podcast and be aware of how important access is, yep. is you don't need to know everything up front before you send a mailer out cover number three because three is funny number three is a combination of of both where you may have physical access you may have legal access uh but you have farmer jones and his wife that have lived there for you know 82 years or maybe three generations that have owned that farm or that house in a rural scenario. There's a gate on like the side the of the property. Like the front one. They own the front property and you're in the back one. <laughs> and you've got a property that comes back because somebody, you know, and they've known about this property for three generations yeah. and they are, they've got a gate up and they're defending it. A gate and a shotgun in hand. <laughs> this is not uncommon. I wish it was uncommon. Yeah. Those situations, uh, and again, we have people <laughs> who, in our group, who pray that they're going to get a mailer back that this is the situation because they like love that type of confrontation. <laughs> Jill and I are not those people. Yeah. We're here to make money and friends. Quickly. We're easily. We're not here to, to, to call lawyers and ups, sheriffs. Upset, uh, upset local people that, um, you know, in some way probably have a right to that anyway. So it, I'm not here to debate all that or in, and engage in some type of argument. And uh, this, that's the reason that neither one of us are lawyers. We don't, we're not arguers. We're here to make dough. 
In that case, you're going to engage the our uh, the Land Academy group. And, we'll help you. And we'll see. Offer how solutions. It goes, but ninety nine nine point nine 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 percent of the time, we move on. Yeah. If anybody really pushes back, we'll move on. If it's easy, we'll move forward. Well, what you'll do is get on those people on the phone and try to sell them the property. What's going on? Yeah. That's, that's actually... That's really the answer. You know what's interesting about that? Then they don't have to defend it. You have legal, physical, they have a gate up and they don't want anybody driving down their road. There's one way, Mr. Jones, to make sure nobody drives down this road and it's me selling it to you right now because they'll have no reason to go down your road. The next three generations Seriously. don't have to worry about it. Let me finish because that's, that's the reality okay mr jones because you and i both know this is not how this is not you know the way to do this i'm trying to be i'm trying to soften it for mr jones i'm not going to be in his face about it um we both know that that gate's not supposed to be there we both know that it's not supposed to be locked because we both get to use that road so here are your choices you want it now you know or or (laughs) Somebody's probably going to buy it. Someone's going to buy it from me and they're going to seek that access, which is it going to be? And it's very easy. And you price it great. And I haven't listed it yet. You're getting first shot at it. I'm going to list it for way more than this. But if you want it right now and take all that work off my plate, I'll give it to you for 25000 And watch how fast they go. Let me call you tomorrow. We don't do term sales, but in those cases, it's so specialized. Uh, we, I would entertain a term sale, you know, $500 a month or something like that. So those are great. See, again, all these options. Great situations to be in, yeah. That's the beautiful thing about here. We're telling you about, we're telling you what to be aware of. We're telling you what everything means. And we're offering you solutions and telling you, if you need more solutions, we'll be here. That's beautiful. Thank you. Jill, you have something inspirational to share today? (laughs) Besides all the other inspiring you just did? Oh, gosh. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I was thinking about... um, I was, I was, you, you asked me, what's your inspiration today? I'm like, you know, some days I don't have a lot of inspiration. Sometimes I'm just a little bit frustrated. And I thought, I'm sure people are frustrated too. You're and I frustrated thought, today? Oh, yes. <laughs> I can't wait to hear this. But I'm, I'm channeling my personal frustration into a very common frustration and tell you how to get out of it. Have you ever been frustrated because you... And your seller cannot agree on a price. That happens. That does happen. Not a large amount of time, but there's a there's a solid percentage where you're like, mm mm, uh, uh, I'm coming up to 19 grand. I could do 20. Like you're at nine, you're at 20 grand. You offered eight, and they want 40. <laughs> and you're like, oh, this isn't gonna work. I know it's worth 60. I'm not giving them 40, but you could see why there's each, each person has a little valid thing. This is frustrating and this is real. So what do you do? You know, you're, and you're like, ah, 20 is the number that works for me. That's it. There's no way I can do 40 because anything goes wrong. Then I'm only making 10. And by the time I back out commissions and broker stuff and everything, now I'm making three. Now it wasn't even worth my time. 20. So you're like, this is a conundrum. What do I do? So, you know, Here's how you handle that. You very professionally and nicely uh, keep that relationship just cool with them, you know, and let them know you tried. Look, I spent 48 hours trying to make your 40 grand work. It doesn't work. I do not have the dough, uh, nor does that number make sense to me. I know I offered eight. The best I can do is 20. Um, and this is my sweet company. It's just you and me. If that works for you, great. You know, I can get that in escrow, uh, in 24 hours. And thanks to my Susie at ABC title, I've been working with for, for a year and a half now. I can, you, I could probably get this closed in uh, 10 days. And what do you think? You know, kind of thing. And if they go, nope, 40. Okay. We'll tell you what, hang on to my number. You know, I wish you all the best. And if anything changes, you know, just let, let me know, uh, you know, and uh, I'll be here and, and, and you take care. So, and you, so what you're doing is reminding them who you are, you're telling them what you can do and you're leaving the door open. That's your job. That's it. 
your job is not wear them down, not keep them in your rotation and bug them all the time. You know, if you really, really, really love it, maybe call them back in a couple months, see if it's changed. But most of the time I move on and it's amazing how many times they come back to me because I handled it that way. Yeah, and you're building up a good, huge, you know, potential pipeline because eventually they're going to call you. If they like you and connect with you and price is secondary for them, they're going to call Joe back and say, you know, six months we talked. I finally, yeah, I'm going to, what do you say we do the deal? And it's because they really want to sell. Yeah. Because they really do. If they really don't, then they're not going to call you. And there wasn't, you know, they threw out, that was their version of a make me move number and they didn't really care. So don't, don't sweat it. This is why we send out so much mail, and we talked about this uh, um, a couple weeks ago on a on big live workshop that we did. You know, I want you to come out of every weekend. I want you to send out so much mail that whew, by the time Monday morning rolls around and you've answered all the calls from the weekend from people that got your letters, you're like, I have 25 I got to look at here. Well, imagine that. If you had 25 on Monday morning that people want to do deals with you, you're probably going to make some really good decisions, and that's what I want. Thank you. What do you have to share with us today, Informational Jack? So we're nine years now, Jill and I, with Land Academy. We've been instructing for nine years, and 20 years earlier than that, I was buying and selling, and still I'm buying and selling land deals. And what I've noticed is that there's been um, an internal cultural shift in the in the decision-making process for people to buy land. Mm -hmm. And I tried to hedge this off my entire career personally, and I and we, very early on in Land Academy, let's say the first four to five years, we were successful at hedging this off. The Land Academy way, the Land Academy culture of buying land is this. You send out a ton of mail. Properties come back. You rate them, let's say. Uh, you got five, you're staring at five potential transactions that have made it that far you've looked at them yeah it's got access yep 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 the price is good i'm looking at these five deals i'm going to pick number one and two i'm going to buy them and resell them and that's it that has been my the way i've been buying and selling land for you know we've done i've done sixteen thousand transactions joe and i have in 30 years and it's still the way we do it for the most part the cultural shift that i've seen in the last several years and i think i know why is to analyze the deal into the ditch. Because if my gut is I'm looking at this deal and 30 to 45 seconds later, I'm not saying, Jill and I are not saying, both of us, we're gonna do this deal. We don't do it. I don't look for a way around it. I don't call the seller back 14 times to change the price. I don't uh, wish upon a star that I can get the deal the way that I want it. All of those things are a result of not having enough deals in the pipeline, having an obsessive compulsive personality, uh, and a whole list of things that are gonna stop you in the, in the end from being really successful at this. There's a cultural shift in due diligence and it's not good. It's, uh, I think that there are other areas, most other areas in your life that is so appropriate. You wanna do that, you wanna do due diligence, you wanna uh, date, date a girl for a long time, then you wanna live with her. Then you should talk about getting married or whatever else. Log, big, long due diligence period. Before you go buy a car, research the heck out of it. Spend months researching it, finding the dealer, getting along with the dealer if you're buying a new car or a used car, same thing. Find the right car. Make sure your mechanic looks at it, all of that. Super appropriate. That's not appropriate in, in the land situation. You know, we have more people now uh, and I know this because uh, we're fortunate enough Jill and I to host that Thursday call we, we record this right before the Thursday call every week actually and so we go into the Thursday call and more and more and more there and I appreciate the thoroughness I really do and and I appreciate the uh, the, the true uh, just enthusiasm on the part of the people that are on those on the Thursday calls are and and asking whether or not would you do this deal should I do this deal and so what I would what I would do if I was flip side and I submitted a transaction to somebody like Jill and I I, I would say here's why I'm going to do the deal do you see anything wrong with it not should I do this deal 
I don't know if I should do this deal. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay. There's a little bit of water over here, and I'm not sure. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to think about this for three weeks. I'm gonna have to call people, and you know, actually, I'm gonna go look at it. I'm gonna go make sure it's okay. That's not. Uh, you want to go in and either do the deal or not. It's so glaringly obvious that you're going to make fifty to sixty thousand bucks or whatever your threshold is on this, and everything goes wrong. You only make ten or twenty. That's why we're here. That's how you make some serious, serious money in this. So that cultural shift, you know, I can only fight it so much. Thank you. Do you agree? Yeah. I was just going to explain real quick. The Thursday call he's referring to is we every Thursday we have a closed member call within all Land Academy and House Academy members. And I'll use this moment to say it. If you want a one-time invite just to like, oh, I want to be on this call one time. I want to see what's going on in there and these deals and all this stuff you're talking about and access and everything. Just send my team a note, support at landacademy.com and they'll get you in. I just thought of the ninth day. Eh? I'll What's, talk about it next week. Uh-oh. Join us next Wednesday for another interesting episode. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. We, we are Jack, Jack and Jill. Jill. Information. And inspiration. To buy undervalued property. We hope you find our content valuable and we appreciate your support. If you have not already, please check out our channel and hit the subscribe button. And your comments and suggestions help us uh, to create the content you're here for. Hitting the like button helps to support our channel's algorithm and gauge your interest for future shows. 